This Thursday night football props edition of the Sports Gaming Podcast is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog has just added Pick'em Scorchers, where you can win 100x. Plus, every Sunday they're giving away $100,000. Use promo code SGPN at Underdog Fantasy for a 100% deposit bonus up to $500. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hrfbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. Plus the NBA is back. And so is the NBA gambling podcast to celebrate. We're giving away an NBA gambling podcast hoodie. Head over to sports gambling podcast.com slash NBA dog for all the details. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner on picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. I love an early chat tout on some CLV. Ooh, what do we got here? Well, we got we got a little, little vibe. I mean, the bite. We're if I'm a Vikings fan, I'm feeling pretty good, right? So yes. Ky- Kyle sliding in, talking about all the CLV he has oh, on Vikings oh. division right now. He is a Vikings fan, a Blue Bombers fan. Uh, speaking of baseball, fuck baseball. Oh, whoa, oh, what? I do have a couple words. To sure. Share. Um, very sad for MLB Sean. Yeah, tough day. But hopefully, you can put baseball Sean in the fucking coffin and mm. get back to football. Because I don't never left, Ryan. Sean, never I, left. My shoulders are 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 very sore over here <laughs> from all the hard work I've been doing. Okay. Yeah. You do you want to talk about uh we want to look at ATS records? You're you're coming up, Brian. You're coming up. Let's look over the last two weeks. How are we looking? You're you're doing well. <laughs> I mean, we throw a, a combined uh what seven and one on our NFL locks if, last two weeks. If you ask me to bring eight and two in the circuit contest. If you ask me to bring one thing to the boardroom, I would say I would just point to the lock record. Because yes. what I've been doing this year, again, we're in Vegas, we get paper tickets every weekend. Every single weekend, I've lo- I've parlayed my locks. Mm. I either get my locks right and the parlay hits, or I I completely skunk out. So far, ten and fourteen, Sean. And the ads. Oh my god! Ten and fourteen. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Ten and four. Yeah. Okay. Ten out of fourteen. There you go. Nailed it, Kramer. Uh, it feels like we're on the path to something. Because I I would say much like uh, a lot of people are saying about Jalen Hurts. I don't even feel like I'm dial all the way dialed in. Yes. And yes. this is happening. We still got some meat. And on I'm the still bone. getting unlucky with the Colt, the NFL admitted to Jim Jim Irsay behind closed <laughs> doors that they screwed up. I want to get paid out, Jim Irsay. Oh. Boy. Imagine imagine the NFL apologizing to Jim Irsay. Uh, after all the alleged and conspiratorial things Jim Irsay's pulled, <laughs> the NFL is apologizing maybe, to Jim Irsay. Maybe Colby's on to something. Yeah. Uh, that would that would be Jim the Irsay day. is the guy, the good guy <laughs> in the NFL owner circles. Um, He's the Donald. I mean, he is kind of the Donald Trump of NFL owners. Yeah, it's there is of, something there. I think he's up there draining the swamp with that sick ass golf oh, cart he drives yeah. around in. He's going to build a wall around these referees. Right? I, not but, but honestly, in. all right. So if you were an owner, would would you or would you not have a sick ass golf cart like Jim Irsay does? Yeah. No, I mean <laughs> uh, a lot of this. Would stuff, you drive yourself or would someone else be driving you? Uh, depends. I driving drunk in a golf cart is one of the great joys in life. You but, shouldn't do that if you're in a real car. No, but on but your if you're property, just on some open space and you're just liquored up behind a uh, behind the wheel of a golf cart. Is there anything more fun than that? Isn't that the whole point of owning a team? You can <laughs> yeah. do whatever you want. Yeah, it's my I, team. Remember that uh, video of Marshawn Lynch when Cal won and he's just driving around <laughs> in the uh, in the injury cart, just having the time of his life. He gets it. It is pretty objectively funny that uh, Marshawn Lynch spent that much time at Berkeley. <laughs> I know he's from. You know, I know I, he I doesn't. He doesn't fit your typical uh, Berkeley crowd. But uh, yeah, coming across the bridge. 
Yes. All right. We got a lot to get to Ryan, a lot to get to. Well, first off, did you see the video of Micah Parsons talking? Uh, he has a podcast players having their own podcasts have really been a, a great we talk about this point for bulletin board material. Yeah. He, he, what he was breaking down the Eagles. No, I wanted I just uh, more of a oh, macro okay. point on athletes podcasting. I, I, I think Jason and Travis Kelsey are, are an excellent podcast. Yes. Why? Jason Kelsey is a very interesting person and somehow is capable of hosting a podcast. His brother, he's the guy dating Taylor <laughs> Swift. But all these other podcasts, yeah, we don't need them. Just because someone is an athlete. Now, is it great because we're able to harvest all this information and we find out a guy like Micah Parsons is friends with fucking everyone? Yeah. Uh, it's disgusting. What is this, the I, AAU? I, I mean, it was as an Eagles fan, I'd love it because when he said the Eagles are the number one team and they have no weaknesses, uh, this is amazing. If I was a Cowboys fan, up. if I was a Cowboys, I kept wait, I watched the clip like twice because I kept thinking, oh, there's gonna be some dig or he's gonna shit on them at the end. But he didn't. He was just like, they're the best team. They have no weaknesses, like rattling off all the he, players he liked. He also said that it was messed up. Like, he also came to Daniel Jones' defense. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes. I, I, he's, he's, he's like, no one could, no one. He well, sounded like you, Ryan. I do have a theory. What's that? Well, I, I think Michael Parsons is, is just trying to get into a leadership role in the Players Association. He's mm. campaigning. He is. That's what it is. He's just <laughs> gassing everyone up. I don't understand. He doesn't need a podcast. <laughs> no, but uh they should show him what happened to Zeke after that Twitch stream. It did nothing <laughs> nothing good's happened to Zeke since the pandemic uh, I'm faded Twitch stream. Oh, you're right. He he That's, was, that, was smoking my weed. that was his boat trip moment. <laughs> All right. Uh uh breaking news as well. We have more than uh, I think, like 60 percent of the people were eliminated in the second chance. Survivor. You losers! <laughs> a lot of people had the Bills, 49ers. Some people got cute, but three hundred and eighty-one people remain in the second chance survivor. Wow! I did have a guy DM me going, uh, "Can we work on chopping this up?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> I'm not going to PayPal three hundred and eighty-one people nine dollars." Oh, that's or the whatever. softest. <laughs> we should almost eliminate. Oh, chop. Chopping is only going to come into play if it gets to the end of the season. I'm going to make a new rule for any future survivor we do. The first person to present a chop situation eliminated. It's an elimination. No hedging in this fucking survivor. No, come on, take that take that to uh Osh Garden. <laughs> All right. Uh, That's well, a uh, Dennis Miller re reference. Right there. <laughs> I was trying to think of a garden store reference. Uh, that no, it's great. I don't know if Osh is a regional uh, place or not. <laughs> it's a it's a bougie regional place. Yeah. Maybe. All right. Uh, we uh, before we get to the uh, Thursday night props, which we got a bunch of them. Even uh, since we don't have a guest, I squeeze in a couple bonus ones. Right. Well, real quick before we sure. move off Survivor, I don't know if you've taken a look at the the personal. I know everyone loves. Uh, personal survivor stories and, and roster baiting on fantasy teams, but we are in a uh, off the record survivor pool together. Have you happened to take a look at it this week yet, Sean? Oh, <laughs> with our uh, our with good Uncle, buddy, yeah, with Uncle Ruben. It, no, it, it's down to like six people, <laughs> and you're one of them. I'm one of them. Uh, you're one of them, uh, and Uncle Ruben is also one of them. So well, let's go, <laughs> we'll baby. Just be fighting each other for the pot. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I, I've heard and I've heard a couple people read like saying their survivor pool is down to like eight people. Should I? Should we be considering chopping? All right, one person reached out. Eight hundred and ten people starting. They're okay. down to eight people. Yeah. Would you Would you be talking about chopping? It's too early in the season, right? Nah, you, nah. you're not desperate yet. No. Nah. Would nah. you ever chop? Um, I mean. You know, if we get to the circuit millions and it's and it's you know, as much as I talk a bunch of shit here about letting it ride, if it's if it's guaranteed uh, like uh, What's the number? Let's talk I was about doing it. the math. <clears throat> uh, I think I think six figures I'm I'm seriously considering. Maybe a million. I, I think a million I'm definitely I censored there. myself on that first number. Million is probably million after taxes. Yeah. Well, we'll tell Derek. Uh, just give it to us in chips. We'll keep it off the record. 
<laughs> cash in a brown paper bag. Sir. Yeah, we're fine. We'll figure that out. So, Drop it off. So basically, uh, if we get down to nine entries, yeah, we would consider. Well, and then, then we have calls. to split. We have to split the million between you know us. We taxes. Got, we got to talk to Derek on if they will help facilitate. I think they will. The chop. I think they will. Because hmm. they, I, I think I don't know. We'll 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 talk about it t- with him on the Veasan show. I I am curious in the mechanics of that because that sounds like a fun thing to track. Yeah. I almost would love to just get like, can we just make that a live show? <laughs> the negotiations. Like, okay, if you want to hedge. <laughs> You can initiate a hedge between these at like between <laughs> noon and one, or I maybe mean, we can make it during SGP live on Vison. You have from 9 PM Pacific on Friday to midnight Pacific on Friday to declare your hedge. Well, this is going to be a tough week, Ryan, and we'll save it for our uh, NFL pick show tomorrow night, but uh, it's going to be tough. I know what we're going to do, but it's going to be tough. Are we, you're saying it's tough because we've already made our decision and we have to stare it down yes. the barrel or yep. it's going to be tough because we might have to talk about it. I mean, we can always talk about yeah. it. It's good content. Yeah. I mean, just think we canceled the survivor bit after one week last year. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't that <laughs> we, we like, decided survivor wasn't fun. It's like a fucking Duracell commercial. SGPN presents real men of D real men of D we salute you, Stefan Diggs. That's right. We'll be talking about him here with the Thursday night props. He tweeted this out quote. I ain't going to lie. I do be feeling a little bad when I fuck up y'all parlay or fantasy. <laughs> we salute you, Stefan. Appreciate that. Appreciate you seeing the, uh, <laughs> seeing us. I see uh, JJ Zacharias saying you drop this and with the crown emoji. Truly, a king among kings and a real man of degens. Uh, Stefan Diggs. Uh, I mean, yes and no. He's doing really well this year. Easy to say that when you're probably cashing <laughs> tickets and helping people win there. Well, lives. I mean, the Bills have lost three games, so I'm sure he's messed up oh, a may, lot of people. You think these are team situations? I, I'm sure. Fantasy is generally just a him score. I, I would imagine after the Bills lost outright as a what was it, eight and a half point favorite against the Patriots, you we think just some mentioned. People reached out. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you killed my survivor. You killed my parlay. You killed my tease. Think how many right? If you've ever talked to a local bookie, I mean. Think how much at, how much they probably made out on that no, no. Uh, on that Bills I, loss. I get it. Um, you know, people are mad at me for going after Jordan Love. <laughs> Not just his fault. Okay, well, he's the quarterback. Ryan. Yes. Uh, before we get to the picks, our pick when it comes to pizza, you know who it is. You know him. You love him. Little Caesars, the official pizza sponsor of the National Football League. Oh man, pizza. Football, they just pair perfectly, much like pepperoni and pretzel crust. Little Caesars reached out and they said, "Feel free to highlight other menu items." I said, "I can't. What do you mean? When you make a perfect pizza with pepperoni and pretzel crust, it's all I'm going to talk about." Uh, no, of course they got great uh, crazy bread, the Detroit deep uh, deep dish uh, style pizza, which I haven't tried yet. That is on my list. The cookie dough brownie bites. The uh, crazy bread, the dipping sauce, the Caesar wings, the wing sauce, they got it all. And it just goes perfectly with football. When you're, when you're stressed out about the game, you get, you get hungry, you get fired up and you burn a lot of calories sweating out this many bets on a NFL Sunday order online during our pizza, pizza pregame one hour before and three hours after NFL kickoffs plus all day Sunday. And again, you can get it delivered. Uh, if you if you hadn't had Little Caesars in a while, they got delivery or in store with their pizza portal pickup. Grab some friends, enjoy a few slices during the game. Little Caesars pizza, pizza. Sorry, Sean, I was um, negotiating a ladder situation. Oh wow! So was, okay, just wanted to make sure I didn't hurt myself. <laughs> Don't fall out of that ladder. You know, sometimes you pinch Luke. your you pinch your finger on the uh, the part that in the inside <laughs> that you gotta straighten out. Broncos safety uh, Jackson lit up Luke Musgrave, uh, essentially breaking our ladder. That was uh, that was disappointing. Uh, Ryan, we're gonna get to the props uh, before we do. Of course, uh, shout out to Easy. He uh, reached out. Ryan's wearing the Easy shirt. He unfortunately um, lost his brother to lupus a year ago today. So. 
Uh, he's doing a little fundraiser. You can go to bonfire.com slash here dash two sixty or hit him up in the chat or on Twitter or hit us up. Um, raising some money for lupus. Good cause. So shout out to easy. Appreciate you easy and uh, best of luck with the um, with the fundraiser. Oh yeah, so. we're uh, we, not 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 uh not the first time we've been involved in a little fundraiser. Oh yeah, always always down to support a good cause, especially if our listeners are involved. I recommend just staying awake for twenty four hours, <laughs> easy, and talking into a mic. That will that will help. Uh, yes, that will help uh, bring attention to any cause. Which, by the way, Sean, I don't mean to drag it out. I know we hmm. we we do not have a guest. But I did stumble into a uh, fun tool on the internet that allows you to see all your best ball mania teams, <laughs> and I've really been having fun exploring. I'm, I'm, I'm long story short, for the, I'm not going to roster bait right now. Yes, I am doing well. That's awesome. Not, not overall, not like uh, from a. Uh, I'm advancing fifty percent of the teams, but I do have some teams near the top. I am in a good position, and my top team. This is why I brought it all up. Top team. It's a Lamar Bryce Young team. Mm. So yeah, has Bryce no. Young scored you any points? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Lamar is L- Lamar has been the fucking man. But no, but don't no Dolphins on that team. Interesting. Oh, enough. okay. My second best team is the Dolphins team. But Ryan, real quick, um, I'll, I'm going to read off this quote because it ties into my first prop. Josh Allen quote: After week two, I've been trying to find a zone throughout games. I feel I perform best that way. Maybe I need to let my emotions show more. If I can limit my energy and my heart rate. I can think a little bit more, but maybe I need to think less and play football. Ties right into the Josh Allen. Well, I got two Josh Allen bets. I'll start with this one. Josh Allen, anytime touchdown plus one four fifty. You're playing it on underdog. It's a one uh one and a half X spicy play over there. What dude, plus one four fifty? Sorry, plus uh one forty five. Oh, okay. Josh Allen to me, l- physically and literally, is a wounded animal. Whoa! Well, he's dealing with a shoulder issue. He wants to put the team on his back. How is he going to do that? He's going to force a lot of balls, both I think positively and negatively. And I think if he smells that goal line, he's going to run it in. Ryan, I think you also have some good stats on uh, Tampa Bay allowing uh, quarterback runs and and not being. No, as, I, as yeah, they just haven't been great against mobile quarterbacks. They've yeah. allowed quarterbacks to get in the end zone. Uh, we remember the game last week. If not for Winfield's magical uh, fumble, forced fumble, Desmond Ritter has two rushing touchdowns. So you know, allowing volume, you know, ten carries to the Eagles. I know some of those were kneel downs. There's going to be opportunities, I think, with when you combine the way that Todd Bowles likes to call his defense with pressure. Yeah, and they'll be bringing some heat when you sprinkle in everything you said. So it ties into yeah. So Josh Allen uh, over twenty three and a half rushing yards certainly would explore a ladder here. I think I saw this the forty. Can Josh Allen climb the ladder considering where his shoulders at, Ryan? I I think Josh Allen is so strong he could climb a ladder with just his legs. <laughs> Uh, and I think he'll be using his legs, and I absolutely love the idea of twenty three and a half is cake. But I was pulling up the ladder here. Forty is plus two twenty five. Fifty is plus four seventy five. Sixty is plus eight fifty. I how do you not see? I don't see a game where he's not using his legs a bit. I, I think we've seen now a couple teams show that if you just double team digs, Allen will still try to force it there, and maybe that's where he has to tuck and run. And maybe that's the difference. Maybe we don't see 15 targets to digs because five of them were bad looks and he shouldn't have thrown it and just runs the ball there. I, I do also think that with no Dawson Knox, it does. I think they're going to be more spread out. And I mm-hmm. think with Dalton Kincaid on the field more, you're going to have more situations where it's basically four wide with a running back and Josh Allen. And that, that creates a lot of space. Yeah, I think when you're side. playing four wide, uh, they'll probably be playing some man behind it. And then that's when you're turning your back and running. <sighs> They're blitzing playing man. Yeah. And it's just, it's tailor made for Josh Allen to have a huge game. So yeah. And, and just keeping with the Josh Allen narrative, Josh Allen over uh, a half interceptions. Whoa. Again, he's, he's dealing with this jacked up shoulder. We've seen it. I don't know what the weather report is yet in Buffalo, but come on, it, it, it could be trouble. He's uh the Bucks have four six interceptions <laughs> this on. season. Is there weather? 
I'm sure it's Buffalo. There's gotta uh, be we're something. Currently projected for a 60 degree night, a chance of rain, and uh, five to 12 mile per hour wind. Look out! Could be gusting. He's thrown an interception in five of his last seven games, including three in a row. And, and the Bucks have have converted on six interceptions. I, I, you know, you saw against the Eagles, uh, they picked off Jalen Hurts a couple times. Usually, relatively clean with the ball, though not as much this season. But yeah, Josh Allen uh, over a half interception. I, you asked if that was a spicy play, Ryan. It's it's a normal play. That's how that's how common. No, that's it, five games out of seven. He's throwing a pick. Sean, not everyone out there has been in the in the old uh, interception streets as long as we it have. Is the, but remember when it was the auto, like the auto play was the second it got to plus odds. Yeah. Bang, you snapped it up. So the fact that you can get minus one ten when he, uh, yeah, like you said, only two games this year he has not thrown a pick. Like it. All right, uh, double Josh Allen for you. I stacked Josh Allen in a way. Mm. I do think the shoulder injury is definitely one of the reasons I like the rushing prop. But I also which, like which is weird because normally you wouldn't like an injured quarterback to be running, but I think so Josh Allen age. is such a maniac. He's it's going to cause him to run more. And that quote to me sounds like a guy who's under a shit ton of pressure and is when he says <laughs> when he says he's just going to think less and play football. It reminds me of that playoff game where he's like running and then getting tackled and chucking the ball <laughs> backwards. Like I think we might see old school crazier uh, Josh Allen. Yeah, the 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 Josh Allen that thinks too much is the Josh Allen that doesn't throw the ill-advised ball back across his body. Yeah. And everyone was that was the funniest part. That's one of the differences in the Giants game is he the bad throw he made just barely made it through to Quentin Morris. If you remember how how dicey that throw is, so I, he's he's more he's more than capable. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I do I also think that with Knox now out, it clears the way for Kincaid to just be out there all the time. And like we said, I wonder if against the Bucks, the best way to attack them. Is spread them out, get three wide receivers out there, get Kincaid out there, make it difficult. Feels like it's going to be a lot of empty sets. Make it difficult for them to crowd the line of scrimmage. Kincaid last week, I believe, coming off an eight target game uh, where he had eight catches for 75 yards against the Patriots, uh, who, not, which that that's not the best matchup for the tight end. Now, uh, jumping into a much easier matchup against the Bucks, over 36 and a half receiving yards. See no reason why he won't receive similar target share. I I think teams are figuring out you just have to double teams digs. Yeah, you just have to like because it's a double whammy, right? Not only are you taking the best target uh, out of the equation, it's also Josh Allen, so he'll probably throw in double coverage a couple times, <laughs> yeah. and you're gonna get some sideline chemistry stuff going because Diggs is gonna get grumpy and stomp around and, and yell and scream, and so. Yeah, love it. Anyway, Kincaid over thirty six and a half receiving yards. Another guy that I I, I hate to completely just lean into the ladder stuff, but uh, the ladder. I mean, you you got to see the ladder they were offering <laughs> down at the the old Ace Hardware. <laughs> we, can we get a hardware store to, to, to sponsor? Yes, this I said we need it. We need a personal it, endorsement. Does anyone work at a hardware store <laughs> that wants to sponsor a ladder segment? <laughs> I, it wouldn't be very difficult. Listen to this Dalton Kincaid ladder they're offering this. Week. I'm listening. 40. All right. So his, his prop is uh 36 and a half 50 is one sixty, plus one sixty. Sixty 60 is plus two fifty five. Seventy 70 is plus three ninety. Eighty 80 is plus five fifty. Ninety 90 is plus eight fifty. If he has a hundred yard game, Sean, 12 to one, he's coming off an eight target 76 yard game. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah. I, it, <sighs> Dawson Knox is out now. It seems like he's going to get a ton of work. We also, uh, oh. We have some other guys that could get involved deeper down the list, which I think creates some opportunities in the any touchdown, uh, anytime touchdown market, and the first touchdown market. But we're talking eight target volume, and that was with Dawson Knox playing a little bit. Yeah, I and I think they're going to throw a ton. It seems like a game where they're just going to let Josh be Josh. I don't. Well, it's it the Bucks are so good against the run, yeah. So that's why I think they're going to try to spread them out. Maybe they'll try to. I I kind of think they're going to run a little bit uh, to trick to get cute. And that's when we're going to see Josh turn into the <laughs> Thursday night. Get pumpkin. frustrated. Yeah. Speaking of the running game, give me Rashad White under forty nine and a half rushing yards for the Tampa Bay Bucks. He's just been horrible. Uh, two and four to the over of this number so far this season. He's averaging only three point six yards per carry. So he would have to get fifteen carries 
which I get they they <laughs> they all the they might give them fifteen. Carries. All the advanced analytics guys just hate oh. uh, how often they run on first down, how often they just give it to Rashad White. But Chase Edmonds, they just activated him off uh, IR, twenty one day window to return. I think they're desperate to get anyone else going. You got to see how inefficient he has been, and I think even if he gets those fifteen carries, I, I think it's going to be ugly, even with Matt Milano out. I love the under here, 49 and a half rushing yards. I think they're going to load the box and, and, and just shut down the run. I don't think that's going to be the runs going to be there. If, if the, the bucks are going to have a chance, I think they're Baker's going to have to have himself a game and really push the ball down the field with Mike Evans. Also think it's the way that, I mean, the bills are pretty depleted on the back end and the Milano injury to me hurts them more in the pass game than the run game. Mm. And so I still think they're they're probably going to create some problems for Baker with the pressure, but yeah, no, I, I actually I I'm going Mike Evans over 16 and a half receiving yards because yeah. I think he's just going to win. So in ba- in every game but one, he's been given eight uh, targets or more, and the the if you just look at the scatter plot of where these targets are, it's just so many go routes right down the field. I think this is going to come down to can he beat can he win like two to three times down the field because Baker's going to give him that chance, and the answer is probably yes because we see him do it almost every week. Also, a notable guy to look at in the any anytime touchdown market because all he does is score touchdowns. Like we coming into this year, we talked about how you got to take his over. All he does is thousand yards, ten yeah. touchdowns, and what is he on his on, on on his way to do? All right, so far this year, Sean. And again, there's one game, one stinker of a game. Outside of that, two stinkers, but he kind of got hurt. I, I guess you could, whatever. Uh, six catches, 66 yards, touchdown. Six catches, 170 yard, one yards, touchdown. Five catches, 60 yards, touchdown. And then there's the stinker against the Saints because we, we don't, we don't have to. Get a little bang we don't have to explain that somehow this dude fuck just owns him. Then we have four catches, 49 yards against Detroit. But that was on 10 targets. A little bit of, you know, a couple weirdness there. Remember that big drop. And then six catches, 82 yards, touchdown. It, it just seems like we're finding money on the street. Give our guy Malcolm a nod <laughs> over on the Premier League Gambling Podcast. Found but money on the me, street. Give me Mike Evans over the receiving yards. Yeah, I like him touchdown as well. I'm with you. Ryan, friendly reminder this episode is brought to you by Better Help. Um, you know, there is a, there is a stigma when it comes to uh, therapy, seeing a, seeing a licensed therapist, but think about it. Like think how many uh, professional athletes uh, talk to someone, get their game uh, going, get themselves dialed in, get that focus, able to work through your problems, talk things out. Like there's really um, no shame in talking things out and, and you know, plenty of people, including some of your favorite athletes have benefited from talking to a therapist. If you're thinking about starting therapy, uh, give better help a try. It, like you owe it to yourself, right? You, you, you only have one brain. You're stuck with your brain, your entire life. Get that brain in shape, get that muscle in peak physical and mental condition. Uh, better help makes it super easy. If you've been ever had plenty of excuses of like, oh, I don't want to have to, you know, deal with the hassle of it. Go drive across town, pay for parking, sit in the office, go talk to someone. It's entirely online. It's it's very simple. Designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. All you got to do: fill out a questionnaire. You get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time. No additional charge. Find someone that you really click with that you can feel uh, helping your brain better. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com/sgpn. Today to get ten percent off your first month, that's better help h e l p dot com slash s g p n. Kramer was talking about some bonus uh, bets. Really, bonuses. Some other uh, some other stuff I like, and this Ooh. is talking from uh, the Don of Bills Mafia himself, Khalil uh, Shakir. Or no, Khalil well, Shakir is the Don <laughs> of Bills Mafia. So. Adam Pelletier, who is saying you guys got to get on uh, Khalil Shakir. Uh, I'm going Khalil Shakir anytime touchdown. If you look at his uh, route participation, snap share started out at 10% uh, game one against the Jets. He's all the way up to 34%. Now, this is before they lost uh, Dawson Knox. So it, 
you know, he plays in the middle of the field there. May even get some more looks. Uh, coming off his biggest game of the season, four for thirty-five. He does have one touchdown. So I, I think he's really in the mix to get a bigger share. And this is talking to to Adam doing some deep scouting. I think a lot of times Shakir is the hot route. So when they are blitzing a bunch, he could uh, benefit from the hot route. So I like him yards. I like him catches. However you want to play it, but his anytime touchdown is plus seven fifty. Definitely going to take a uh, a bite out of that one. That's a good building block for a yes. same game parlay. For a DJ's only parlay. Stay tuned. And then, of course, the man, the myth, the legend, Reggie Gilliam. He's my white whale. Although he's not really a whale. He's a just a he's a giant H back. He's listed as a fullback, but if you've seen some of the some of the plays they draw up for him, they run these fullback type screens. Um, Bill's nation has been calling for him. You to don't get have more to involved. explain who he is. We've given him out on the show <laughs> this year already. I've given him out a number of times and damn it. If the game they stopped, I had him hundred to one first touchdown. And uh, in that, in that bills Bengals game, and he had a red zone catch almost put it in. So I've been chasing this one. His anytime touchdown is 22 to one. He is a guy and Ryan not only is knocks out, um, but Morris, their other tight end is out. So yep. it's just going to be Dalton Kincaid. Who's not really a tight end. Yeah. Who's kind of a split receiver. Reggie Gilliam can block. That's why he plays this fullback H back role. I think he's going to be in on a, a bunch of stuff near the goal line. And so if, yeah. you, if you've not been in deep into the bills, mafia streets, they call Kincaid swole Beasley. They do. So we should call him Swole Beasley. Swole Beasley. Address him by his God given name. His Bills Mafia given name. Uh, 46 Mantra 2 in the chat uh, pointing out Pretzel Crust for the win. Uh, (laughs) Serial says, What about Hardy? He's been getting some uh, some looks. Yeah, this is this is just kind of going off what uh, Adam, uh, Bills Insider, tipped me off to as far as Shakir. Uh, Gilliam is my own just uh, uh, three man rotation Hardy, Shakir, and Sherfield. Who's sure, get it? And Sherfield's interesting too. Like I think all these guys Similar that prices. are that are long shot anytime touchdown bets are interesting in this because of the game script, because they're at home, because they're massive favorites. Yeah, I, I, I think I, there's a lot to like here. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I'm kind of yeah. I'll let you. I'll let you go. Joe uh, Diagnostino. It sounds like he's a Bills <laughs> fan. Says no, no, we don't call him that, Ryan. There is no Swole Beasley. So I don't know where you're getting that from. <laughs> Swole Beasley, say his name. Swole Beasley, Kramer. Where, where's that guy uh, coming? Call uh, is he joining from uh, YouTube Sicily over there? <laughs> oh, he's probably uh, calling in from Rome, uh, New, New York. York. <laughs> I used to live there. Is it? Is it, it made Polish? Men up there? Is there like a? It's near the Turning Stone. Rome, New York. Right. There's a lot of Italians Ro- around. Oh, really? Yeah, it's Rome. <laughs> Wasn't built in a day. Uh, Joe is calling in from Buffalo, Ryan. Oh, okay. He's probably going to talk down on Rome. Really? He yeah. probably thinks Buffalo is better than Italy. <laughs> uh, you know, both known for their food. One wings, the other uh, espresso. Probably eat their wings with ranch. That was as someone who's been to Italy twice in their life. Shout out to me. The wow. Uh, well, it's Italy's one. Italy's pretty awesome. It's it's similar to for Hawaii. all the slander that you have about uh, Italian people. Oh, I like their country. Now the people themselves. Um, no, you know, it's just the it's the Jersey Italians that are the issue. The actual oh, so your issue is Italian American. Uh, pretend people pretending to be Italians is is my <laughs> these uh, Fanuk Italians as 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 the good folks would call them. Italy is like Hawaii, where everyone hypes it up, like, "Oh, it's so awesome!" You blah blah blah, and you're like, "All right, is it really going to live up to the hype?" Yes, it does live up to the hype. And then there, I, I don't know. There was, like, I don't know if it's like an urban legend or something, but they go, "Oh, the the pizza's different. It's not, it's not what you wouldn't like it or something." The pizza is awesome, and it is exactly like pizza over here. So I don't know, I don't know. They don't have pretzel crust, but the pizza in Italy is amazing, along with all their other food. So the Italian American pizza is the same as Italian pizza. Yeah. Interesting. Like the New York pizza is it's slightly different than Italy pizza, but it's not you wouldn't go, "Whoa, this is what you call pizza?" You're like, "Oh, yeah, this is pizza." I think yeah, I feel like you're going to get crushed for that take. What do you mean? I think people might crush you for that take. Why? 
I don't know. The I've been food, to Italy. The out there. I'm I've been saying. to Italy. I've ordered pizza all different parts of Italy. It's all good. No, I'm going to do that reporter thing right now. Some are saying. <laughs> That's what I, I've heard that same those same rumblings, and I'm telling you, there's nothing to it. I like it. Fiery takes. Now that baseball Sean can get the fuck out of here. Although I'm a little worried that uh, I saw Sean uh, rocking a 76ers thing earlier, so I'm worried that baseball Sean just getting replaced by basketball Sean. Yeah, it's, fuck the Sixers. The, I mean, oh wow, is well, that a Harden? Did you mean fuck the the Harden? James Harden and Bead Soft. They're they're in the wow. team. What's the new team? Are you gonna just be a free agent for a little bit? No, no. Just no basketball team. No. So you're gonna be a free agent. You can you just can't say no, out still, loud that I'll I'm not gonna be a Philly I'll fan. Still, I'll still root for the Sixers, but okay. I'm I'm pissed off at them because of how soft Embiid played in the playoffs and what a bitch James Harden is. It makes you soft if you root for a guy like that soft. No, I'll always root for the Sixers, but I'm mad at the team right now. Take a break. Unlike you, Ryan, I don't uh, I Take don't blindly support. The, uh, you know, I air my grievances against my team. James Dolan doesn't own the Sixers, <laughs> and you might have a similar take. I mean, he's. Imagine if a, a an owner of a Philly team had uh, we would we would Allen never Iverson allow that. escorted out of the building. That wouldn't happen. That you would never allow it. Unfortunately, James Dolan owns a lot. Joe is saying no. Italy pizza doesn't have tomato sauce and pepperoni. Well, Joe, I'm sorry, you're wrong. I went to Italy and they, they do have pepperoni's not like the default topping, but yes, there are many pizza you can get in Italy with tomato sauce. People are gonna send jokes like you went to Little Caesars in Italy. No, I wish there was a Little Caesars, but uh, yeah, I would just go to some other pizza places. At Sean T. Green. Alex. Yeah, I'll I'll happily talk pizza. Talk well, pizza I, all day. Yeah, we need to have Sean rank his top uh, <laughs> pizza provinces. All right. Yeah, I could do that. Jersey number one. No, Italy. Oh, okay. Italy's the best pizza. You just said it was the same as Jersey pizza. Similar now you're style. going back to giving the backhand. No, you you weren't you weren't you you weren't listening at all. I was saying it's a similar style, but the the quality of the Italy pizza oh. is second to none. It, it's it's fabulous. Got it, got it. But you there's like these urban legends that it's completely different. Yeah, I well I think it's just people expressing their take on certain types of pizza. <laughs> I well, I definitely think they have pizza without sauce over there. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. yes. But they're if you order a pizza, you're not gonna go, what the hell is this? You go, Oh, this is a pizza. It's amazing. It's delicious. Okay. At Sean T. Green on X. First touchdown? Yeah, let's do it. You go first. Well, I I feel like I've talked about all these guys because I like them in the any touchdown market as well. But Josh Allen, it's it's chalky as hell. Yeah, eight it. to one. Um uh Khalil Shakir, thirty to one. Which someone told me that FanDuel has ten to one on Josh Allen. I didn't look it up, but that's ridiculous. Khalil Shakira, thirty to one. Uh, obviously, Reggie Gilliam, seventy-five to one. And then the one guy I like on Tampa Bay, Kate Otten, twenty-two to one. Hmm. Why Kate Otten? Just firing a tight end. It's just I. If it's the starting tight end, how can you not play him at twenty-two to one? Well, that's the Milano angle, I think. Yeah. All right, so wait, you only did you go three one or two one? Three one. Oh, interesting. Because I I wanted to get Gilliam and Shakira in there. Okay, yeah, I you were gonna go get you were always gonna go Gilliam. Yes. You have to go Gilliam on this card. You have at seventy five to one. Last time we gave him out, he was one hundred and ten to one. He's down to seventy five to one. You got to take him, hundred percent with you, Sean. Uh, surprisingly, we I also uh, came here with a uh, one buck three. Bill mm. strategy, which I will say I very rarely do. So odd well, that we have usually, the same. Usually the underdog, you find better prices, but I don't know. One, one, the Bucks just haven't been scoring a ton of touchdowns, but it, it's also pretty condensed. This is the shortest list of players I can remember at DK for first touchdown. And yeah, to your point, what's what's the cute play? Trey Palmer. Well, he's a, he's twenty eight to one too. It's like yeah, that's it's, silly. Like so, let's not get cute then. So for the Bucks, I'm going. I'm just Mike Evans, yeah. eleven to what, one. Uh, yeah. Josh Allen, eight to one, and give me Dalton Kincaid at sixteen to one. Okay. Oh no, I'm sorry. He's not sixteen to one. He's twelve to one. That's all I'm doing. Taking a lot of chalk this week. I do think these offenses tend to concentrate the way they attack. 
And so yeah, maybe. Joe, the uh, Bills insider, say pointing out that Gilliam isn't going to see no? a touch. Long shot. Well, yeah, I mean it's seventy-five to one, twenty-two to one, anytime. Yeah, I'm sure Latavius Murray has better chances, but we're trying to get some long shot winners in here. I guess so. I'll be curious to see what they do around the goal line without any other. T- are they going to call up a tight end? Because they don't have another. According to according to Adam, uh, they don't have like one sitting there on the practice squad ready to go. Oh, I thought he gave us a name. Maybe, okay, maybe I misread it. But yeah, no, I. Th- Don Kincaid's not a blocking tight end. The Quentin Morris da- Dawson knocks out. If, if if they don't call up a tight end, then isn't Reggie Gilliam just going to play that role for them? That's so, my logic. That's my logic. I think seventy-five in, to one. I think in twelve personnel, which they run near the goal line, they call I, it eleven and a half. Yeah, <laughs> or maybe the Bills insider will tell me I'm wrong about that too. No, they do love their eleven Sean, and a half personnel. You got to realize you're deeper than the average fan. It's all right for all the teams. We'll see. Uh, Reggie Gilliam, I'll. I'll I can, I'll say this: Reggie Gilliam almost guarantees his snap share goes up on Thursday. I would be shocked <laughs> to see his snap percentage go down from last game. I'm in. So you're getting more opportunity at the same price. To me, that is a winning betting strategy. You know what else is a great strategy? Signing up over at Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code SGPN. 100% deposit bonus up to $500. Pick 'em Scorchers. Just came off a three and O run for Monday Night Football. If you just played the three, uh, so imagine this: you're you're a you're a you're a listener to the show. You put a uh, deposit a hundred dollars on Underdog mm-hmm. Fantasy. Use Done. the promo code SGPN. You take those two hundred dollars in credits. You played my uh, Monday Night uh, Pick'em, which I gave out, which went three and O. You would have be, you'd be sitting on twelve hundred dollars. I, I, I'm I'm taking the horse to water. Oh, All I, you got to do is drink. Folks. I would have deposited five hundred. Yes. So I because I, it's a hundred percent deposit match up to five hundred. So Ryan, I'd have six you, grand right now. A whale like yourself. It's a baby mm. fucking wheel, man. You would you'd be sitting on six k. So nice. you wouldn't need those. You wouldn't need those Jordan Love parlays that you keep belly aching about. You could have you could have been catching catching those scorchers, Ryan. I love I love how Daniel jo- just trolling me with Daniel Jones being on the scorcher graphic. It's, <laughs> It's not nice, Josh. It's not nice. Is that the hot seat uh, that he's no, on? No, he's there. Uh, he's there on with Patrick Mahomes, so it must be. A and good it's thing. it's not a seat. I'm sorry, it's a chair. Uh, one day he will get out of it. Pr- prayers oh, for Danny. My goodness, the way that you make fun of the handicap in this. No, country I don't. Is I don't. I don't make fun and of by, the handicap. And by, Ryan, I make fun you, of you Daniel Jones. Did. You just did. Who pretends he's uh, handicapped? Also, uh, uh, <laughs> NBA gambling podcast hoodie, giving that away. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash NBA dog. Dog. And then, of course, our favorite Hall of Fame bets. They got that parlay optimizer. I just used it, uh, I use it all the time for these player props. I love their deep data button. So uh, if you're talking like receiving yards, you can just hit deep stats and then it'll break it down. Like y- you want to look up, um, you know, percentage of times that Mike Evans went over. Give me, give me a yardage total, Ryan. I'll drop, I'll drop some For, stats on it. Uh, what, like a player, Dalton Kincaid, 23 and a half. All right. Or do, 36 do, do Mike Evans. Cause My, I got Mike, Mike I Evans, got 60 and a half. Okay. 60 and a half. Basically a dummies. It, it presents data in a view that you would be interested in if you're betting props, because yes. it says things like this is how many games he's attained that total this year, which in, if you looked at the yardage, you would find out he went, he's He's gone under more than he's gone over, I think. Last 10 games, he's gone over 60 and a half receiving yards 56% of there the time. Go. So you can take that information, you know, put on your own projections and you can figure out uh the odds and and figure out some great prices. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. If you're doing props and parlays, you owe it to yourself to get this thing. You're going to save yourself a bunch of time. Start researching, start winning. With Hall of Fame bets. By the way, the tight end that would be called up is Joel Wilson out okay. of Central Michigan. So maybe un- keep an undrafted eye on him. this year. Um, yeah, you know. If there are any uh, late second swaps, I will drop them in the sheet for the Patreon, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon, or, or hit me up on X. Uh, finished his career at Central Michigan, 82 catches, uh, 874 yards, 12 touchdowns. Last year was 44 for four. 45 and six touchdowns. Mm. Third team all Mac. So he's a Chippewa, huh? Yeah, he's a Mac guy. Perfect for Buffalo. All right. 
Yeah, he might be selling me on this guy if he gets the call. Up. Joel Wilson. I mean, th- we are the deep tight end knowledge uh, gurus. All right, what do you got for the the big banger? What's the big banger? Okay, I got two. Really? Well, the first one, Khalil Shakir, two touchdowns. What do you think I'm getting that for? Twenty-five to one. No, Ryan, <laughs> higher. Forty-five to one. No, think of Sean Payton hanging out with his son's friends. All right, two fifty to one. Ninety-five to one. Oh wow! Khalil Shakir, remember that name? I I think most people. I mean, we know the Bills fan in the chat knows who Khalil Shakir is. Yeah, I I, I like it. I guess it's a cute play. Cute. It's a cute play. I don't think it's that cute, is it? I think it's two, pretty two simple. Two things have to do. Have to have. Have yes. to happen. Um, yeah, like Khalil Shakir, two touchdowns. I also. I'm recommending a round robin anytime touchdown parlay. And you're putting Shakir in there, you're putting Reggie Gilliam, and then What's Gilliam's price? Josh Allen. Gilliam alone is twenty two to one. Oh. Shakir is seven fifty. Some life changing shit that's gonna happen. And then Josh Allen is the small dog at plus one forty five. So I I wasn't able to give you all the computations, but if if you hit the the three the three aspect of it, it's 180 to one. But then if you're round robbing it, you would also add um, those two legs onto it. So you, you could make an insane amount of money. If this comes through Shakir, Josh Allen, that one's pretty sweet. Shakir Gilliam. That one's pretty sweet. So I like plugging in Josh Allen to this. And then let's say just the long shots, Shakir and Gilliam hits, you still get paid out a ton. I mean, any of these combinations, you just need to go Two and one, and you're cashing out a nice chunk of change. Uh, yeah, when you throw a twenty-two to one in Koist, a round robin, it really juices it up. Koisty in the chat saying you two have lost your minds. What do you mean? Oh my god! Oh come on, Khalil Shakir. I don't think is that crazy. It's a little. It's definitely crazy. How many touchdowns does he have on the year? One. Okay. Yeah. So he would be. So then it's a little bit crazy. Is it? Yeah, but that's the point. Yeah, I mean it's a you DJ's only parlay. You want safe? Go watch the game with your wife. <laughs> Put on four condoms and sit a whoa, reasonable whoa. distance. He has four condoms. Well, you know, extra Feels like safe. You get some circulation issues. He started four games in his career. He has two touchdowns. I I think at ninety five to one, I like my chances. Sean has confirmed not lost his mind. He's just he is coming off a little bit of a suffering the the Phillies just lost. Yeah. It's a bummer. There's an emotional uh, aspect to what's going on here. He's looking for a big bang so he can get back all the way. He knows that this win would make him feel good. Shoot a little video screaming into it. Cody uh, from uh, TAV checking in saying another good day in the office. He wants to see Fox and Gumbity getting a YouTube channel. Great to uh, Great to let you know the MMA gambling podcast oh, wow. does have their own YouTube channel. So is I that wanna... a plant? <laughs> That's got to be a plant. Gilliam, oh. uh, Joe is saying Gilliam is the crazy one. He's saying Sherfield Hardy and Kincaid. So if you want to go with Joe, Bills fan, Sherfield Hardy and Kincaid, and and I don't hate that. I think Sherfield's anytime touchdowns always been interesting, but uh, I'm rocking with Gilliam. It, this is personal with me. And if you guys don't want to, if you want, if you don't want to go out on the boat with me and try and catch the white whale, that's fine. That's up to you. I'm setting sail uh, Thursday afternoon, Ron. Sean, we need to find one of those videos of those uh, south, like the Southeast Asian islands where they whale off of like pontoon boats, and guys launch themselves up in the air with spears. Oh, going, that's yeah. just you going after the white whale. I mean that would be a pretty sick photo. Sh- jo- Josh, make a note. We need to get Sean's head on one of those dudes' bodies. I have a very, very clear uh, vision in mind. All right, I, my, a I, I, little bit more complex than yours. Okay. See, I like keeping it simple. I have two actually. First, okay. Josh Allen, and this is on both of them. Josh Allen rushes for fifty yards. Josh Allen scores two touchdowns. Those two things happen, thirty-four to one. Okay, you know what? Uh, I, and I was kicking myself watching that Colts Browns game when Gardner Minshew scored a second <laughs> touchdown. I was like, "Gah, that could have been us." It was ninety-five to one, Ryan. 
Why were we not on that angle? I I mean, I was on the Browns. I thought the defense yeah. would be a little better there. So wait, you're saying Josh Allen two touchdowns yep. and how many rushing yards? Fifty. Yeah. I, <laughs> You, you look like, you look, you to look like uh, someone like appraising a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear the? It's thirty-four to one. Second one. Yes. You ready for this? I'm listening. Dalton Kincaid. So again, Josh Allen, fifty rushing yards. Cody's saying Kramer's due for one of these big boys. I know it's coming. Uh, especially with all the parlay karma. I've well, and and Joe is saying he is cool with Shakir, so that one that one's passes mustard. I, I realize I'm biased on my Gilliam place. You just like a good tight end, a nice H back. Yeah. All right, so Josh Allen, fifty rushing yards or more. Dalton Kincaid, a hundred receiving yards or more. What do you think that pays, Sean? Sorry, you said uh, Josh Allen, fifty rushing yards. Okay. Dalton Kincaid, a hundred receiving yards. Hmm. He had seventy six last last week. Kincaid. Yeah. I would say that pays forty to one. Fifty five to one. Yeah, I was gonna. I I do like the. I think you found the sweet spot there in the thirty four to one with the two rushing. Oh, touchdowns. you think I got greedy? No, no. I just I, I like I like the simplicity of the two touchdowns yeah. and fifty rush yards. It is a little easier. It is simple. And then if I if and I, I, I and I would rather go, and I would almost rather go. Uh, if you if you're looking to get the odds up, Kincaid two touchdowns, Josh Allen rushing yards. Uh, I don't like I don't like doing two yards at the same in the same parlay. Okay. If you're asking my opinion. <clears throat> and then uh, if you want to go, oh, well now you're making me want to do everything. All right, so all right, we got really crazy here. So if we do 50 rushing yards for Josh Allen, 100 receiving yards for Dalton Kincaid, Josh Allen two touchdowns, Kincaid two touchdowns. <laughs> It's two thousand. Okay, now that one I like. That oh one's that one's your that's your safe play, Ryan. Okay, safe play of the day. Gamble responsibly. Yeah. Someone told me. Um, someone responded to the Jordan Love owes me money <laughs> post where I shared my parlay. First of all, a lot of shaming that I played the same parlay twice with only. Just a lot of general shaming that you would put the same team in multiple parlays. No, don't do that. Uh, what kind of world do you live in? Yeah, what your wife? Your wife? Let, she takes. She takes. A, she allows you to enter on Sunday mornings, and that's it. <laughs> I, I mean, what? What? How, how do you live your life? I do like the one you guy. Don't goes, fire off parlays. I do like the one guy who goes. You didn't make. Uh, your your mistake was you made a bad bet. Uh, Packers closed as a one and a half point underdogs. You fucking idiot! They lost by two points. So even if you got your precious CLV, you still would have lost the parlay. The issue was Jordan Love didn't go down and get a field goal to win the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean the world is very interesting place. I I never would have. If ever you're gonna do, I told you so. At least have if the CLV was plus two and a half. Still, it's a, an asshole thing to say, but you would at least be correct with the math. Also, yeah, you couldn't be missing like you couldn't be missing the mark even any harder. Any harder. That's J your imagine you're driving down the street and you see someone who'd just been kicked in the nuts really hard. <laughs> you your thought you're is explained. to pull over and scream at him and throw it maybe Why were you not wearing a cup? That is not He'd maybe flick a cigarette butt at him. <laughs> like what's wrong with these people? Yeah, what do you, do you work at? Do you work at uh, the sports book? Is that is that how you're making your money? Are you, wearing are a you, wire? you using that to feed your family? Like, well, shouldn't you? I mean, we should all <laughs> root for each other in these bets. The best uh, I part. Get, I get if you're on the other side, you're rooting for your bet. But if you have no skin in the game, why would you be? Ups you should want other people to win bets. One of the guys uh, replied to me and had a hashtag Packers hashtag NFL. <laughs> It's like, all right. Hashtag winner. I see what Hashtag Dejans only. It's like you're it, it's this weird time we live in where we want to whisper to another human, but make sure we say it loud enough for the robot to index it. <laughs> fuck. Ah, uh, fuck indeed. All right. Hey, good times. Ryan, we will we'll be back tomorrow night with our NFL picks podcast. Mm. Cannot wait. Uh, yeah, and we got a bunch of other fun stuff coming up. Vison show Friday night, nine o'clock Pacific, midnight 
on the East Coast. I'm going to go on another uh, run on the NFL slot machine. Looking really forward to that. The slot. How's the slot? It's hot, Lenny. It's hot. And uh, yeah, of course, get in on the uh, NBA gambling podcast hoodie competition. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash NBA dog, dog, dog. And uh, yeah, check out the uh, MMA gambling podcast. Just launched their YouTube channel. The hockey gambling podcast guys, they're back. They got a YouTube channel. We're going all video here on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green. He's Ryan. Video, yeah, Sean. Kramer, let it ride.